Hello MXNet fans, my name is Sina Afruz and I'm a software engineer at AWS AI. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take advantage of the imperative nature of Apache MXNet's Gluon API to easily debug your network. Now, many of you have experience with platforms with declarative APIs such as TensorFlow or CAFE or MXNet's module API. One of the challenges of using these platforms is that the define then run nature of the declarative API is not debugging friendly. When something goes wrong, like you get a tensor dimension mismatch error or your loss doesn't converge the way you expect it to, you have very limited visibility into what actually is going on. With imperative APIs, such as MXNet Gluon, the nodes of the graph are executed as the Python code executes. If you've never used a debugger with Gluon, you will be very pleasantly surprised at how easy it is to debug Gluon. And if you already have experience with that, I think you can still find a few tips in this video. In this video, I'll be using PyCharm Editor to show the power of Gluon and Python. PyCharm comes in two flavors, the professional edition and the community edition. The community edition is a free version of PyCharm. However, there are some features missing, including the remote debugging ability. And for that, you would need the professional edition. Let's get started. I'm going to create a um, PyCharm project. And uh, you can create a new environment, but I'm going to use an existing Anaconda environment uh, that I have on my machine. For this video, I am going to use uh, the convolutional neural network in Gluon example, which is part of the uh, straight dope book. I'm going to go ahead and um, download this notebook. Now, notebooks don't run very well in PyCharm, so I'm going to go ahead and use the Jupyter NB convert command to convert the notebook to, uh, to a normal Python script so that I can easily debug it in PyCharm. I'm going to open this script. Now, one of the, the first thing that I'm going to change is that this notebook is written for GPU context. I'm going to change that to CPU. Set a breakpoint on the first line of the script. And under Run, I'm going to select uh, Debug. So once the breakpoint is hit, you can use F8 to step through your code. And you can see how PyCharm very nicely shows you the values of the parameters that they, as they get assigned. I'm not going to go through this um, no, uh, notebook in detail. I'm just going to mention that uh, here a sequential block is being, getting created. If you uh, need to understand the details of this notebook, feel free to go through the uh, notebook on Straight Dope. So this is uh, our, uh, the training loop. Now, the part that I really like about uh, debugging in PyCharm is uh, the watch window shows you all the variables that you have. One of the things that I often find really helpful is uh, looking at the shapes of the data that I'm passing to my network. So you can see that here, the batch size is 64, uh, the number of channels one, height and width like 28, 28. And uh, I'm going to double check what my label is going to be. And again, you can look at the shape of the label. You can also look at the values that we are passing in. So this network is a classification network. 
for uh, MNIST uh, digits, handwritten digits. So the uh, labels are going to be between 0 and 9. Now, I'd like to go a little bit deeper into my network and see what's actually going on. So if I want to go in, I'll just press F7, and that steps into the function. Now, this is the forward call of my network. You can see that it takes you to the forward call of the sequential block because that's what my network is. You can see that the sequential block has a number of children. And if you look at the children, these are basically our layers of the network. So it has a comp2d followed by maxpool, a convolution, maxpool, flatten, uh, fully connected dense layer and fully connected dense layer. And each layer has uh, you know, some information about uh, what the kernel size is, what the hidden size is. It's really, uh, really helpful. Now, let's say I wanted to um, dig deeper into one of the layers, for example, this convolutional layer. So each layer has a name. So I'm going to here um, copy the value here, copy the value of the name. I'm going to go back and uh, create a conditional breakpoint. So I want this breakpoint to be hit uh, only for this specific block. Then I'm going to hit run. Of course, it's going to stop here. Now I'm going to pre press F7 and go deeper into this block. Now F7 again. And now we've, uh, we're at the forward call of the main uh, hybrid block, which is the base class for many of the um, blocks in Gluon. And what that forward call does is that it does a, a bunch of sanity checks, including um, deferred initialization of parameters. So I'm going to go through that. And then at the end, it calls hybrid forward, which is what you normally implement if you are writing a hybrid block. So this is where the convolution actually happens. And then this is where the activation is applied. Now I'm going to show you something really cool here. If I go to the console tab and enable a console prompt, now you can basically run uh, any Python code similar to how you can do it on a, a normal console. So I'm going to, for example, look at the shape of my um, activation. Now I'm going to um, convert the very first element in my batch to a NumPy array. Now I'm going to calculate the sum along the channel axis of my array. So now I have an eight by eight uh, ND array in NumPy. Now, now, if I go back to debugger, now you can see that this variable that I just created has showed up here. And there is a view as array link here that you can click. And it basically opens it up in this scientific uh, view tab where you can explore all the values in here. I'm going to import matplotlib similar to how you would in any script. to display this activation as an image. Now, if I do uh, I am show and then show, bam. On the plot tab in the side view, now you can see the activation came out of this, uh, this layer of my network. And I did that basically all in the uh, PyCharm environment. And you can do the same thing for uh, any of the layers. Now, deep learning and GPUs go hand in hand. And 
often if you have a laptop, you do not have access to powerful GPU. So I'm going to show you how to do this debugging remotely using a uh, Amazon EC2 instance, which is equipped with uh, GPUs. So this is my AWS um, console. I'm going to instantiate a new EC2 instance. Now, when you go to the marketplace, if you search for DLAMI, which stands for Deep Learning Amazon Machine Image, the first option that shows up is uh, the, usually the most suitable option that you want to use. Now, there are a number of uh, GPU uh, equipped instances that you can uh, instantiate. The default one is the uh, P3 instances. I'm going to select a P2, which would be sufficient for this video. Now, in terms of the volume type, you can either use the uh, general purpose variant or you can use dedicated ones. So the general purpose one is uh, does not support as many uh, IOs per second. So if you do have uh, an application where you do need to read from uh, the disk uh, at really high rates, use the provision uh, IOs. Now, if I try to connect to the instance using SSH, you can see that as soon as you log in, you get this message here that shows you all the existing Conda environments that are already loaded uh, on this uh, instance in this DL army. The one that I'm mostly interested in is the MXNet P36, which is the Python 3.6 Conda loaded with MXNet and a lot of other um, libraries, including uh, matplotlib as well as numpy. So I'm going to activate the, this environment and I'm going to check what the Python path is in this environment. Now I'm going to go back, copy the host address, and I'm going to go to preferences and under build execution and deployment, select deployment. And under deployment, I want to add a new deployment. I'm going to select SFTP and I'm going to uncheck the visible only to this project check mark here. Put the host, username is Ubuntu, authentication is Keeper. Test to make sure that the um, SFTP connection works. I'm going to create a mapping between uh, my source code and uh, the uh, remote instances uh, folders. So you can very easily uh, browse through the remote instance. So I'm just going to select the source under home Ubuntu and put this under glue on debug. Now what I want to do is create an interpreter that is also running on that remote instance. So under project glue on, I'm going to go to interpreter and I'm going to add a new interpreter. This interpreter is going to be an SSH interpreter and it is going to be based on an existing server configuration. The server configuration is the one that we just created here. I'm going to click next. Now, the interpreter path is going to be this Python interpreter path that uh, is under this Conda environment. And then the sync folder, we want to 
sync our project route again to the path that uh, we selected with the remote deployment. Again, home Ubuntu source and go on debug. So now you can see that uh, there is some synchronization happening between your local machine and the uh, remote machine. It takes a few minutes for that to finish. Now, before we can do remote debugging, we do need to tell the Python remote interpreter where to find CUDA libraries. Now, in order to do that, uh, you go to Run, Edit Configuration, select environment variable, add a new environment variable, ld library path, and we want to set it to the path that CUDA is installed. Now with DLAMI, it's installed under user local CUDA lib64. And this is usually the default on most Linux machines. So now, if I set a breakpoint and start debugging, you can see that it is now connecting to the EC2 instance. And now this is running on the remote machine. Now remember that here we had a CPU context. We can now change that to a GPU context. I'm going to set a breakpoint right before our training starts. Debugger has reached the beginning of the training loop. So you can see that we can basically do the exact same things that we could do with uh, local debugging, except that now the context is set to GPU. So we are using GPU and we are uh, using a um, machine that's uh, in the cloud. If I basically let this epoch can, uh, run without any breakpoints, you can see that if I check uh, you know, NVIDIA SMI, I'm using my GPU 10% because this is a very simple network. Now, I do like to add one extra comment at the uh, end of this video that even though Gluon is an imperative API and imperative APIs are known for not being very high performant, Gluon does have a very unique ability, which none of the other deep learning imperative platforms provide, that it allows you to prototype and debug using the imperative API nature. And once you are ready with your network, you can then hybridize your network, which effectively transforms it to a symbolic graph representation. And now you can run it just as efficiently as you could with any of the declarative API networks. And this is a single line that you can add to your code. And that's what makes Gluon so much easier to work with than any other platform that you can find out there. I hope you enjoyed using Gluon in PyCharm with a debugger.